this a beautiful morning and I have to introduce my dog. This is, <laughs> this is Bruno. And he's always by my side when I'm sitting around. So he's joined us for a few moments. Um, hope you all have been enjoying the beautiful weather of the past few days. It's just been so refreshing to have warmth and not have to have heavy coats on all the time. Our theme for today is accept the light of the world. And that seems appropriate today in a special way. Our uh, <clears throat> um, days have been getting longer as we approach the start of spring. And as we know today, we've placed an extra hour at the end of our day instead of at the beginning, which in theory gives us an extra hour of daylight to enjoy throughout our spring, summer, and fall even though many would prefer it to not, not to bother. I always know when it's coming up about the time that I can see my high school students' faces when I go to pick them up in the mornings. Um, as I arrive in my bus, uh, it's time to change clock back and plunge them back into darkness. On previous Sundays, we've heard of the call of our, of to be the light of the world. And God knew what we needed. We needed an example to follow so that we could have an understanding of what was required of us. So our scripture for this morning comes from John 3, 16, 21, 3, 16, pardon me, 3, 6, ah, John 3, 16 through 21. And this is from the New International uh, version of the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. This is a verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of the light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. These words put forth a very clear challenge for each of us. We all one day uh, will be at the end of our days here on earth and God sent his son to show us how to live our lives in order to achieve our salvation. All of us, unless we live near the North or South Pole spend a great deal of time in darkness. Most of us, unless we work the night shift like our daughter April does, most of us attempt to use that time to rest and renew our bodies and let the day's activities soak into our own consciousness. That's a good thing because we must have that downtime to stay healthy. We all know that many bad things happen under the cover of darkness. When we have teenagers, excuse me, he's a grumpy old man sometimes. Um, when we have teenagers, we try to get them to understand that they need to be home at an appropriate time and appropriate hour, because it seems that if they stay out late, they not only don't get enough rest, but they often tend to get into more mischief of one sort or another. Another example of things that happen, my brother-in-law and his life's work was with the, Depart with the Drug Enforcement Administration. And in his early years, he often went undercover work. And uh, sometimes he, you know, it was penetrate the drug organizations in order to discover who the leaders were and help to bring them to justice. Many of their dealings take place under the cover of darkness, literally or figuratively. Dangerous work, but necessary to help save lives. There are many other instances that darkness offers cover for evil purposes. 
but we know that most plants and animals depend on both light and darkness to be able to grow and thrive. Without the light, we would not have photosynthesis and we would not have plants to supply food to sustain us or trees to help produce oxygen. Without these things, all things would die. This is also true of our spiritual lives. We have experienced, we all have experienced dark periods in our lives, times when nothing seems to be going right. Our spirit stops growing, we feel isolated and in the extreme, we become depressed and hopeless. We begin to feel that we are at the end of our rope and don't know where to turn. Sometimes it's job or finance related. Other times it's our relationships with one another or within our own minds. Sometimes our decision-making abilities may have taken a dark turn. These types of darkness can be painful, lonely, as poor Job experienced in the Bible. If not for the intervening light, it can lead to death of spirit, mind, and body. But God knows our strengths and our weaknesses. He created us. He gave us our agency. He had to give us a way forward, an example, and a guide to live by. In order to answer our needs, God sent his only begotten son. Jesus is our light. The examples that he gave us while here on earth and recorded in the scriptures are our guides. Once we have discovered Jesus, we're challenged to become the light to others. It becomes our discipleship to study, to follow his teachings. Our discipleship calls us to look for ways to share our love, knowledge, gifts, and talents that we are so freely given. In Matthew 5:14 through 16, says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. John 8, 12 says, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And Romans 8, 28, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. This past year has been a great source of darkness for many people. The COVID virus has been and continues to wreak havoc around the world with loss of lives, loss of jobs, loss of businesses, loss of unity in both family and friends. It's been the cause of loneliness. We just heard Jim say that this was the first time that he's had to see his family since last summer. It's also a cause of destitution, has been a destitution, hunger, and in some cases, death. And yet it's been an opportunity for many to let their light shine. Necessity has led to innovation and growth, need in many areas we have never experienced before in our lifetimes or in our country has been great. There have been many opportunities for us to follow Jesus and let our light shine by putting minds, hands, and feet to work, as God calls us to do. Zoom and similar programs have made it possible to safely meet for business, school, church, family FaceTime, and many others. We meet together from a distance, and it's been wonderful that we can share our worship with Steve, Laura, David, Ruth, and many others who have signed in. It would never have been possible or practical in the past. We've been able to be mis ministered to in real time from afar. Steve gave our sermon the other a week or so ago, as well as our, as our uh, guest minister last week did. We can share with shut-ins and others in ways that we've never been able to do before. We've been able to have, have uh, Gloria and um, 
Joyce join us when they would, would not have otherwise have been able to. Although many businesses have closed, others have opened and prospered by developing new industries and reinventing their goals and their products. Teachers have learned new and innovative ways to take the classroom into the homes of children when it's not been considered safe to share the classroom. Groups such as churches and individuals alike have taken on the task of gathering and distributing food to those in need. For many, this was the impetus and the motivation to move out in ways of service that they had never attempted before. Scientists, doctors, nurses, as well as institutions such as hospitals have been stressed to the max, but have discovered new ways of dealing with challenges. Many restaurants, individuals, and groups have donated meals and gifts of needed items to essential workers and those in need in ways that they never imagined before. There's been several cases in the news of restaurants that normally make money by feeding people in their restaurants and taking money for it, who have turned to donating thousands and thousands of meals to the hungry and to nurses and people on the front lines. That is just amazing how much gifts people have given need, uh, just so wonderful. <clears throat> in each case, someone got brave, took a risk, allowed their light to shine, to build communities that reach out to help and support their neighbors. This past year of COVID has been a real challenge and many have discovered talents that they did not even know that they possessed and the courage to follow in the teachings of Jesus. He taught us so many things during his time here on earth as we approach the Easter season that reminds us of the ultimate gift of God, the gift of his only begotten son. We must thank his disciples who took the risk to keep his message alive. Many of them lost their lives to do so. We must thank all of those who continued to practice discipleship through the centuries since the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. To preach, and teach the gospel to those committed to write and to those who committed themselves to writing down and saving the spoken tradition that we have to lead us today. Now it's our opportunity and responsibility. If we truly believe and choose to follow the teachings of Jesus, to continue to reach out to others, to share his word, and to love others. May we always remember to ask. God, where will your spirit lead today? Help me be fully awake and ready to respond. Grant me courage to risk something new and become a blessing of your love and peace. Amen. My, get, my prayer for you is that you may choose to walk with God today and always. Thank you. <clears throat>